Hi, I'm George Beccoloni, curator of orthoptroid insects here at the Natural History Museum. Alfred Russell Wallace was one of the most prolific collectors of natural history specimens of all time. He collected an astonishing 126,000 specimens whilst he was in the Malay Archipelago, what is now Malaysia and Indonesia, um, on an eight-year collecting trip. He collected many thousands of specimens on his previous um, four-year trip to Brazil, to the Amazon region, and unfortunately, most of those were destroyed when his ship sunk on the way back to Britain. He was only 26 days into the voyage. Wallace rushed up onto deck and saw smoke billowing out of the hold. He was able to rush back into his cabin, which was filled with smoke by this point, and grab one tin box containing drawings of palms and fish and a few notes and things. Um, and that was all he was able to save. He got onto the lifeboats with the rest of the crew. They were on the lifeboats for 10 days. Wallace had lost thousands and thousands of specimens collected where no collector had ever been before in the Rio Negro, etc. All went down with the sinking of the Helen. The theory of evolution by natural selection came to Wallace whilst he was suffering from malaria. As soon as he was able to, he wrote his ideas down on paper, and in the next few evenings, he sort of fleshed them out into um, a presentable scientific paper. And suddenly, all the bits of the puzzle fell into place, and he had discovered the theory of natural selection. When he got back to the neighboring island of Ternate, where the mail ship called, he sent off the essay along with a covering letter to Charles Darwin in Down in Kent. He knew from correspondence with Darwin that Darwin was interested in what was then called species transmutation, or what we call evolution today. And what he didn't know was that Darwin had actually discovered it 20 years beforehand. So when Wallace's letter arrived a few months after he posted it, and Darwin sort of opened it, he was actually, uh, he was absolutely shocked um, to realize that someone had basically discovered his theory. To cut a long story short, Darwin's friends decided that the fairest thing to do would be to present some of Darwin's unpublished writings on the subject, plus Wallace's essay, to a meeting of the Linnaean Society of London in 1858. They were actually published in August of that year. Their joint paper was basically a co-discovery of evolution by natural selection. Wallace was a very famous scientist in his time. He wrote widely about society and politics, but after his death in 1913, he became forgotten. And people now, when they think of the theory of evolution by natural selection, they remember Darwin, but unfortunately not Alfred Russell Wallace.